Greetings, resilient listener, as we embark on the continuation of our journey, picking up from the gripping aftermath of the crematorium. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kyle, and the lingering shadows of our last encounter, Ortega, lies unconscious, a testament to the challenges faced and the sacrifices made. The destinies of Lady Tatiana, Ari, Parrish, and Captain Talus hang in the balance, and the air crackles with the tension of what lies ahead. But as always, a recap of the previous session, brought to us this time by Talus. With the evening drawing to a close, everybody went off to do their separate things. Um, I lost sight of both Tatiana and Ortega at the same time, which was suspicious. Uh, And then when nobody else was looking, I decided, well, I decided, well, we both decided to sneak off and spend some time together. The next morning, we spent some time identifying the various magical items that we had recently acquired and then I again being a tad bit restless wanted to get into a fight and Ortega offered his face to be a target and I may have hit him a little bit too hard. Once breakfast had wrapped up we decided to go to the crematorium to address a lead that had gone unaddressed up till that point. Once we arrived at the crematorium the employees there mentioned the archaeologists and employed our help with some of the bodies that were unattended there. Amongst the bodies we discovered a unexploded rock body, which personally I found gross and distasteful, but others were interested in poking around with that. Parrish managed to completely dispel the rock of its gas without, you know, exploding anything, but was shouted at by a strange bookish tiefling who we found out was Prolix, one of the archaeologists, and he wanted to excavate the creature's stomach to get at you know what honestly I stopped listening after he said there was loot in there and I thought well I'm I'm down to be part of that. Prolix was uh, encouraged by Parrish to try the procedure himself which um well, the stomach exploded, and that set off an unfortunate chain of events in which a bunch of undead came out of the coffins around the crematorium. But once we dealt with the undead in the crematorium, um, we realized that Ortega had made an interesting choice to pull out one of his magical items, and he immediately fell unconscious. So gather round, dear listeners, and join us in episode 14, the last episode of 2023, where the echoes of our previous battles persist and every decision reverberates through the narrative. As we navigate the twists and turns of our unfolding tale, may the magic of storytelling transport you into this pivotal chapter. All right. So Ortega is unconscious in the crematorium. And at this point, Sebastian is letting his brother Reynard in, having cleared the bellows and the smoke fading. And you see Prolix Yusuf also laying down, apparently not responsive. What do you do? Well, I would offer to do mouth to mouth, but um, this whole lack of breathing thing, it wouldn't work. Um, are we in initiative? How pressing is that, Kyle? Um... Yeah, I would say it's pressing. There's no initiative, but it's definitely you're running out of time. Cool. I'm just going to triage medicine check Ortega. Yeah, make it 11. It's it's enough. You can you can tell that he's still breathing. Um, He seems he seems as though he just has the unconscious condition. Like it doesn't look like he's taken any physical damage uh, more any more than he had already shown to have taken. This seems to be some form of metaphysical, some mental issue which has caused him to go into this uh, catatonic state. Um, oh. It seems there will you will need to do some form of magic to uh, restore his his consciousness. I'm gonna, if I may, finish my turn. Use my act. 
Mm, I can't use an action as a bonus action. I'm going to use my move over here. I'm going to my you know, Parish's eyes cloud over Milky White again as he sees the Raven of a God uh, hovering over the unconscious figure who's bleeding out. And he'll just say, leave us as he casts. Uh, stabilize, whatever that one is. Where's my spells? Spare the dying. Okay. You see, uh, Prolix Yusuf, um, the, the raven that was, that only you could see, the, the raven that only you could see starts to, it kind of looks up at you, it, it, and it, it quickly flutters past, and their shadow of a figure vanishes as Prolix goes, <gasps> And his breath returns. I will head back toward... I'll take my action to get to Ortega. Okay. Uh, with a dash. But that's my turn. Up next would Ooh. technically be Ari. I run to Ortega. Um, I'm shouting at Parrish, who seems to already kind of know what's up here. Um, I don't want to take my action to do it. I want to do Healing Word, but I don't know if it will work. Because um, I think Parrish did the medicine check earlier and learned about the unconscious status. I don't think I know that. Um, I don't think I've communicated it. Yeah. Nope. So do you know what? I will use healing word on Ortega. I run over, grab his hand um, and I say nothing for nothing nothing for someone like you. Come on. I'll be getting be get. uh, Ortega, make a constitution check for me, please. Check. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm make it a saving throw. I mean, it's yeah, I'm making a saving throw. Going outside the confines of the spell a little bit here, but eleven. Or as I rolled a four. <laughs> it's a good thing you have uh, <laughs> plus seven. <laughs> Ortega, as you're holding his hand, he you feel you feel his hand grab yours as his eyes slowly open again. Would you scare me like that, big man? Uh, or- Ortega's gonna go to pull himself up, not realizing how strong he is, and uh, just like pull you down onto the yeah. ground with him. Pull, yeah, you'll pull me right on top of you, probably. Uh, I didn't go as planned. Thank Never you. Does. As Ortega starts to get up, you'll pat him, pat R on the back as he uses him as like a cushion to like push himself up before just grabbing the this, this scruff of your your vest and pulling you up onto your feet with one hand. Thank you, not necessary. And, uh, and it's at this time that you get a really big hug. From, well, I mean, uh, technically, from it's Ortega. Bonus action. So you, you uh, might be early on your hug, man. I got a bonus action here. <laughs> the full action, actually. Healing words, bonus action. Oh, oh, healing words, a bonus action. Oh, oh. So I didn't get picked up by the scruff of my neck, is what you're saying. That's what we're saying. Hmm. All right then. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm actually. I I'm actually you down though. with it. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a given. <laughs> Um, kind of happens at the same time. For my, uh, for my action, I want to survey um, who else is hurt, and I need to make sure that the party's all good. How is Talis? How is Lady Tatiana? How is Parrish? That's my action. Like I want, I want to survey as, as as effectively as possible. I mean, you're within all, almost uh, all of them. Um, you do see that. Yeah, they're a little hit here and there, um, but more or less, everyone seems to be fairly okay. All right. Then uh, after the hung by Ortega, and I am placed back down upon my feet, I will um, face outward, hands on pistols, and I just want to look. There, wait. So there are these blades over there. Actually, no. That's wait a spe- second. That's a spirit. Do I see that? Sorry, do I see that Ortega has used Gisano's machete? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> okay, cool. Then the hug doesn't happen because I shove him and I say, The hell? The hell are you thinking? You don't even like magic. Why are you playing with fire? You're getting burned. Ortega's going to bend over and pick up the blade and just go, No, put it down. You're welcome for killing the real big thing so that it didn't hurt you. He's just going to put it back on his on his on his waist where it was, pick up his other two swords and sheath them and go, "I'm fine, are just a little No, I mean winded. I made you fine." I look around to just like it will it will just like 
whatever. It's at this point that be careful with things that be careful with things that make you fall upon use. You've saved me before from such things. I'd love to save you the journey. Ari, have you ever seen someone fight beyond when they should be down? Yeah, I've known you for a while. Yeah, that's what happened. I fought beyond my means, and then I was exhausted. It's kind of how it works sometimes. I would like to make an insight check to see if I can tell about if this is shenanigans or if this is the blade. Go for it. I mean, we four. didn't really get a whole lot of sleep last night. A four, eh? Marish also rolled one, but that was <laughs> before. <laughs> oh. Well, wait a second, though. Ooh, it's with my character sheet, though. That's still going to be a six. Woo. Oh, no, that's five. It's I a rolled five. a natural 16. <laughs> So you, plus one. I believe him, I guess. Yeah. I gave you a plausible explanation as to what could have happened. Because I don't know that I got knocked out just by the sword either. Like, yeah, who character I do. But like, <laughs> I was exhausted. Harry I looked at Harry. 20 insight, but he's not oh, saying yeah? anything. Well, I was going to say, I looked to Parrish because he's the, the leading healer. And this is a chaos scene. I look to him for, well, first to make sure he's okay, and then to see if he needs help. Or is Pega's going to follow his glare. Parrish is bloodied, but probably just jogging back to you guys after having done his business over there. I mean, if Talis or Lady Tatiana want to do anything before I answer. I'm out of, I'm out of initiative now. Sure. Like, I, I'm just I'm just checking on. I'm checking, that's, that's where I will leave my turn, is checking on Parrish. Cool. And that's the end of initiative. So you go. It's fine. Okay. Got it. I'm um, going to stay out of whatever this is and um, mind my own business. Oh, what's up, Talis? You want to go somewhere else? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to just walk away. Talis, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> no, Talis, we've seen what she does to the people in the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom with you. I mean, I'll come with you. It's fine. <laughs> You're just going to look for loot in the dead body, right? Yes. I'd love to do that, actually. Yeah. All right. Let's... No, now... The dead goopy things or the bird thing? I'm going to go look at the frock. <clears throat> That's the bird thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alice and I are going to have girl talk over by the dead bird. It would be at this point that Prolex Yusuf has also been helped to his feet by Reynard. Um, and and he's he's already heading over. He was already heading towards the direction of the rock in the first place. And um, before we get to that, Parrish? Ortega, would you mind taking a seat just for a second while I check you over? I trust you that you are well enough to stand, but you did take more of a beating than most of us. Taking a beating is what I'm good at, Parrish. I'll stand. But feel free to look me over. I'm fine. Uh, oh, damn, I am rolling bad medicine checks. Ten. Yep. I'm fine. Uh, just looking for HP total, more or less. Um, whatever Ari gave me. I don't know if he actually rolled hit points or not. Oh. So no, no, you're, currently I'm at one. Are, your hit points are, are you're you're at whatever it was before you went unconscious. Mm. I guess at the end, oh. it would have been really low, but oh, <laughs> it would have been. So. Low. <laughs> oh yeah, like. <laughs> I, I was, like, still I was on like eight or nine left. Yeah. Jesus. I think I, think <laughs> so, I, remember, I, think I remember eight being the. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm at eight out of sixty nine. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so like. I mean, I'm fine. So look uh, at me go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh no, I already second winded last session. Never mind. Um, I, oh, since we, I, I just rolled my D four. Yeah. For my healing word, and I gave you. I rolled a four plus my spell casting modifier, which I believe is a three. So there's seven extra points of healing for you. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare. Or not prepare. I'm going to cast if we have 10 minutes of reprieve while we're doing the whole talking to this person and looting. Um, prayer of healing. So during that time, uh, Talis and Tatiana, you meet up with Prolex, who is now officially performing the surgery that uh, <laughs> they were tasked with beforehand and then botched it entirely. 
And uh, I'll get it this time, I promise. I'll get it this time. And you see, now that there's already a giant hole in its body anyways, uh, he just kind of pulls it apart. And in you, he pulls out this green caustic uh, bubble, which appears to be the stomach. And he takes his little dagger out and <laughs> as the as stomach acids kind of pour out over the table and you see a few things pop out. You see a, uh, a, a pair of gold trimmed uh, gla- mask like glasses. Um, they sort of resemble well, maybe what looks to be like a just a, like eyes and a beak for the nose. Um, you see three rings, um, very tarnished, gaudy, probably not worth it, much more than two gold pieces of pop. Uh, you see about three of them. Um, you also see a cube shaped puzzle box made of onyx measuring about three inches per side uh, as it rolls out. And as it rolls out, Prolix grabs that and turns around and starts looking at it, leaving all the other items aside. Can I grab his hand? Like, as he, like, grabs it, I want to, like, just grab him. Uh, uh, oh, oh, um, sorry, uh, yes? What you got there? It's, it's nothing, it's nothing. I, I, mm. it, it's a, it's a puzzle box, you know, you know, we had these as kids, um, very, very well versed in these. I, I know how to unlock it and I'm sure there's many, much more mysteries inside. Uh, I, I'm, I, I think it would be best if I, I take this to, you know, the, uh, the archeologists to, to, to open it in case there's anything dangerous. Uh, if, if you don't mind, mm, I think I do mind, and I'm gonna do an inside check on him. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> he looks to be trying to sound much more important and trying to make it seem like it's uh, like like he's the only one who has the ability to to fix this issue. Uh, you get the sense that he is quite possibly lying. Yes. You're lying. Uh, 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 no, of, of course not. Uh, it's it's just, you know, it's, it's a puzzle box. Uh, uh, oh, uh, fine. Okay, yes. I don't exactly know how to open it. But it. Sorry, darling. It's it's important. Um, I know it. It's important, and it it came it came from inside the betrayer's rise, and that that is something that we must get back to the archaeologists. Mhm. Mhm. Okay. Mm. Ari, right. can you tell me what it is? Yeah, believe I uh, believe I can. Look at that! Uh, I don't need your archaeologist, and I want to pluck it out of his hand. Um, make a make a dex, make a sleight of hand check. Actually, this is sleight of hand. Okay. And this would be a fourteen. This is going to be with disadvantage because he is actively holding on to it. Okay. Twelve. Look, you're not able to 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 get it out of his hand, but mm-hmm. he he does he does look at you and he goes, "Okay, look." Let's let's make a deal, okay? All right. Have you heard of someone? I, I she she's a, she's my rival in the archaeologist. Um, of, uh, uh, Aloysia, Aloysia, you've you've heard of her, yes? Uh, well, she's 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 looking for something in the Vitraria's Rise. She's she's not hard to spot. She's tall. She's pale. She dresses in red very cold-blooded and it's it seems like she'd do anything to get anything that she wants and well what she wants well that's that's what i'd like to know you know and and if you can keep her from getting what she wants then i am more than happy to give you this box and for your troubles 200 gold look at that boys and captain i found us a payday that's good i'm broke Mm, well um 
Uh, as far as I know, uh, yeah, she's she's been heading to the the betrayer's rise, and uh, she. I was I I was sent by the allegiance of all sites. Um, now Alicia likes to claim she's also from the allegiance of all sight, uh, but she's actually she's actually not. She's from the consortium of the Vermilion Dream. Now we don't really know why the allegiance has dispatched somebody, or sorry, we don't know why the consortium has dispatched someone here, but it it definitely cannot be good. So while I yes am an archaeologist. As you may have been able to tell, my skills are lacking. I'm actually much more proficient in espionage and spy work, which is why I was sent here in the first place. So, honesty prevents. <laughs> Does Ari recognize the name of the consortium? Make a history check. 16 plus 16. <laughs> There's no plus. You... <laughs> You've heard of it. Um, it's definitely not... What do I know about it? It's it's more so... Uh, you've heard of it as being sort of like a, a harmless group of ghost hunters. Um, okay. But there seems to be a lot more of a, a focus on discovering about the red moon of Ruidus. Um, and the mineral they that everyone has at this point come to know as Rudium. Um, as you haven't been in Marquette, um, the only places and, and people you've seen are just scholars who have come and gone across Exandria from, uh, you know, places where you've come from and, and been. Um, very heavily profit-driven and very aggressive in selling the arcane services of its members uh you've been approached by one before in the past uh but you were quick to turn it down and i was pretty much the last you'd ever heard or seen of it thank you so meta real quick we have a potential payday here Mm -hmm. (laughs) guy seems skeevy and i don't like him at all i mean just because we take a job offer doesn't mean we have to follow through with the offer all the way maybe until it, it suits us best okay so you're so you're advocating the just the tip type of employment okay sure okay just the tip. i mean if i get offered 300 gold pieces to you know mess up this guy's plans i mean what am i you gonna appreciate do? You know going for the highest i appreciate going for the highest bidder but i also want to make sure that we're not uh no. <laughs> Setting fire to where we live while we do it. Cut herself? Oh, for fuck's sake. Hold on, the kid cut herself. Sorry. I'll get I forgot it. I was oh. not on mic. <laughs> <laughs> Talus, you shouldn't be using that knife so sharply. Well, sometimes, you know, it, it happens. Careful with your chopping. Uh, <laughs> time. Talus, do you by chance have the Jewel of Three Prayers? Are you wearing them? Where are they right now? So, I... We never decided this in... um, Like, there was no scene where I said that I put them on. In the back of my mind, I thought Talus would just want to keep them close to her, so they are either on her person or, like, in a pouch on her waist. Whatever you think makes the most sense. I'll kind of... The the reason why, like, is, like, are they visible? They're not visible, no. Okay. Um, Prolix, he goes on to to talk a little bit about the allegiance of all sight, and he uh, he mentions that at some point uh, during the creation of the allegiance of all sight, and up until now, one of the key things that they've been looking for have been vestiges of divergence. And as he says that, do you react? Does any of you react? I try not to. <laughs> Artie tries to no sell it. I mean, I've got my like, I've got my bandana and my hat on, and I'm a pretty easy no sell. Parrish has actively been not engaging in the conversation because he is busy um, 
singing hymns to himself with the prayer of healing for 10 minutes because he does not like this man. I think Ortega has gotten the vibes coming off of Parrish that he is A, actively awaiting healing, and, and B, really wants to watch what exactly it is that Parrish is doing that is creating the healing. Um, to answer that, it is only verbal spell component. So I was imagining him opening up back that book of uh, names that he had shown y'all and mm-hmm. is uh, oh God, the book of names reading through that in a different moment. language. Uh, I'm guessing you don't speak uh, under common or halfling. Um. Let me double check with you, but uh, I don't believe I speak either of those. I think I speak all kinds of Sylvan. But it that book out in, uh... just breaks my heart. Um, Tatiana, in your inventory, yeah. you will see that there is an item that um, you would have picked up as uh, the other stuff fell out. May not have updated yet. Mm, inventory. Do, do, do. Uh, not yet. I'm gonna just hit F5 and just be good. <clears throat> but Talus. Uh, yeah, so Talus definitely perks up at the mention of the of the vestiges. Is there a way that I could do like maybe an insight check to see if I th- um the allegiance like <laughs> currently has a vestige or might know the location of one or like how much information I could get out of them. Make a make a deception check. <laughs> sure. Why do I feel I'm like you're good deep. at the posts? Okay. That's a 16. So as he's going on about the vestiges and you're kind of like, oh really? Like tell me more. Tell me more. And he's just, you know, starts blabbermouthing. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's, there's the Star Razor, which is currently in the possession of someone that we've come to know quite well. And there's, oh, my goodness. Uh, the, um, I forgot her name. Keyleth. Uh, she, she's got one in Taldorai. And there's, there's a bow, Fenthris, and... I'm not actually quite sure its whereabouts. We've known of its location for a long time, and then it disappeared. Uh, but uh, Lady uh, Lady Vexalia has informed us it's in good hands. And um, w- one of the strong jaws has a belt, and the Dawn Father's mantle is locked away safely. Um, there's a few that haven't been located yet. There was, um, there was a, a jewelry at one point, uh, from what we've learned, and a couple others here and there. Uh, we don't, we don't have any, but we've definitely been keeping very close watches on the ones that we know their whereabouts of. Yes. Is there any that you'd be curious on? We, we know a lot about most of them. I mean, I was just, you know, just casual interest. You know, I don't know very much about magical artifacts myself, so I was just, you know, curious soul, you know. Well, yeah, they are quite lovely, powerful magical items. They built during the calamity. It's mm-hmm. oh my goodness! I I would just love one day to get my hands on one of them, just to inspect them and to see all of its glory, beauty, and uh, there's a very big connection to the gods. I I, oh. I oh my goodness! I I could talk about them for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> Anyways, well, I, I, I best, I better be going. Um, I'm gonna go talk to some friends of mine to help me with the research. Um, actually, they might be able to to help you um, going forward. Uh, have you been Have you been to the ready room at all? The the inn recently. My, we found our way there once or twice. My contact has just arrived, and looks like me, um, and oddly, a, almost a little bit like your masked friend over there with his 
fancy hat, a tiefling. The uh, horns and sells itself. Um, Not your business, really, but thank you for noticing the hat. Oh, a, a lovely hat. Very lovely. Not, not my thing, but of course, it's different strokes, different folk. Uh, anyways, the other scholar, he's, uh, he's here. He's going to talk to me about Basil Zan and the, the, the research and, and some, uh, some, here, some here's and there's. And uh, if you're eager to talk to him, it, his name is Question. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Question? His name like, is Question. I have a question. Yes. Uh, he, his, his name is Question. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's his up. parents must have hated him. Sometimes our parents. And I look, I look over to Lady Tatiana and I just say, Tiefly names can get a little uh, idealistic sometimes. I'll tell you. Uh, maybe I'll tell you mine someday. I'm just going to call you Ari forever. It doesn't matter what you tell me. You could tell me your name is Bobby Joe. It's just you are Ari. First off, if, first off, if my name was Bobby Joe, I would tell everyone my name was Bobby Joe and there would not be a problem there. Second off, you don't even know what you're missing. And Ari walks away at that point. Um, sorry, I mean, I, I should have more for that conversation. But adult... Uh, that's that's it. It would be um, at this point that the prayer of healing would finish. How much healing do I get? Nice. So to answer Ortega's question earlier, uh, yeah, Parrish would be reading from that book of names. And uh, after kind of oh, every line he uh, is sort of singing, kind of gives a ring from the mace that he wields. And everyone gets 13 HP. Oh. Ari takes note of the song. <clears throat> And Ortega, you're also going to get an additional 12. Nice. Do your 12. Very nice. Let's go find another fight. <laughs> Rain, Reynard approaches and... Well, it seems as though um, your stipendent payment is in order, as I suppose you took care of the issues that needed to be taken care of. Now, uh, if you would like to earn a little bit more gold, uh, as I'm sure traveling adventurers like yourselves would, um, if you could, you know, dispose of these icky things and uh, just return the dead to their coffins. Uh, we will take care of the rock with, um, and he, he points to Ortega, with your assistance. It, that would be too much of a hassle for you. Yeah, you gotta pay me first, though. So. Well, the payment would come when you're all finished. But... Well, no, we already saved your ass. Right, but you understand that the original reason for us was to help dispose of the corpse of the Vrock. Um, How much are you offering? Uh, if you guys perform your duties perfectly, I can offer 50 gold apiece. Sorry, was that 50? 5-0? Five, 5-0, zero? Five, zero, yes. All right. I'll give a pound yeah. of 50 gold pieces to Ortega. What? I'm not, I'm not sure I, I follow. There's the job. I was, I was, I was, I was gonna move the rock because I could still probably do that to. myself. Yeah. I just don't so now, want to squabble over coin. I want to but, get these. But now I'm getting arrested. paid twice. Is that how this is working? Oh, absolutely not. I'm taking your share after. I'm paying you beforehand. No. Hey, Sprunty, you have money because you decided to upset the entire economic order of payment after services rendered. I'm sorry that I was unconscious. Payment after services rendered, which means that we will take care of the large beastly thing. With your incredible strength and lack of business moxie, we will take care of the large thing and then we will be paid and that's generally how the point of business goes. And I don't feel the need to upend the entire economic order to receive payment before moving the big thing. While right, they're squabbling, can I... Go ahead. Just go and like pick up the smallest body and throw it in a coffin. <laughs> you make a performance. <laughs> make a oh, make a make a strength check. Well, right. you know what? Athletics or acrobatic? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. Uh, acrobatics, because yeah. twenty six. <laughs> you, you're able to like deftly kind of like scoop under and you know put it right back in. It didn't seem to make it uh, far, so it was more so just kind of picking up all the pieces really quickly. 
I'm gonna dust off my hands and kick. All right, pay up. I'm done. All right, I understand the word economics. I've never actually had to use it in practice because it doesn't no, exist in the Fey Wild. Well, my friend. And I, and I say to him, like, with, with love and respect, my friend, you may have forgotten. You ain't in the Fey Wild anymore. So, what we'll do is we'll clean up the task and we'll finish our job, and then we will be paid our 50 gold, which is more than I have had rattling around in these pockets than for far too long. So, please, let's just be good sports here. And then we'll see how we invest this because if there's one thing that you and I do well, it's turning a little money into a lot of money. I appreciate the extended roundabout way of asking me to do the job. I, I think I've already said twice I'll do, um, but I would appreciate it if you didn't talk to me like a politician. Ortega. <laughs> As Ortega walks off and starts, he's going to rage to pick up the, 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 the rock. He's just going to rage, grow and double his size and pick up the bird by himself. Make a... Is that... Make a strength check. Sorry, oh, yeah. Get advantage on that nonsense. Uh, that will be a 22. With it being a large beast, um, it is still rather difficult even with the 22 to lift. Uh, it takes you a second, and you uh, uh, you gotta kind of resituate situate yourself again, and you know, kind of yeah. bend the knees. A Don't little forget, bit. I'm like I'm I'm like twice my size as well. <laughs> oh yeah, he's also large. <laughs> and, and you just gotta you get a good grip, and knowing what you know about Verox now, especially, you're more careful with it in case that there's any more yucky, uh, icky. <laughs> And every time somebody else tries to help, I'll just growl at them. <laughs> Sebastian was trying to help, and you're just... Mm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you successfully get it into the into the burning pits, and you watch it as it slowly starts to vent out into steam, smoke, and ash as they rot. I think Ortega will kind of stare at it a little longer than everyone else. I, no one else is really staring at it. <laughs> so you're just oh, right. That is, he's just awkwardly yeah, watching no, this dead bird burn. <laughs> yeah. What? Where is this um, so-called spy archaeologist? Because I believe we had an accord that he was to be cleaning up these bodies afterwards. Oh no, he left. He went to the ready. He went back to the ready room. <laughs> All right. He, he definitely bailed on him, uh, his end of the bargain for sure. Eric. <laughs> Before paying us is what you're saying. Oh yeah, he hasn't paid you yet. No. This is why. Or- this is why Ortega is God. staring into I'll- the flames. He is just seething. If you prove Ortega right. If you prove <laughs> Ortega right, and this guy skips us on payment, I yeah. swear to God. <laughs> Parrish Her- oh. comes and stares into the flames with our tag. <laughs> <laughs> no, he- Ari comes over, just says sorry, and he's like flicking his guns while looking at the flames. Pro- Prolix Yusuf has nothing to do with the crematorium. The uh, Reynard is an established businessman in this in this town. He will more than definitely be able to, and he's willing to pay, and he wants to pay. Um, he he's good. Prolix. Yusuf, he's not from here. Like his money comes from like the higher ups, you know, in another city over, and it's you know, yeah, we don't talk about where his money comes from. <laughs> Parish is just mad because he came into here with a lot of bluster, and Parish was like, "Okay, we'll help you, but you need to help tend to corpses," and he fucked off. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm getting straight out of dodge on this one. Yeah. He doesn't. Um, he's, he's not doing that. <laughs> Garish, you've had a you've had a rough go in trusting NPCs to accomplish <laughs> tasks in your absence. Um, actually, while Parrish and Ortega stare into the fire, Parrish will offer just a bit of an apology. <laughs> I'm sorry. Offering you that coin may have been disrespectful. I know that I'm not strong enough to have helped with that, and I'm glad that you stuck around too. Ortega's just gonna. Put a hand on his shoulder and slide his coin pouch back onto his belt. No apologies needed. Aww. Your money's not needed. Not by me, anyway. Unless you're willing to pay for my room at the ready room because I'm broke. That's cool. Uh, but 
I'd probably just spend it faster than you gave it to me, so you might as well keep it. Appreciate it. And as for paying How for... How much of that do you have, by the way? Because you just handed me 50 gold willy-nilly. Parrish will just look up at him and say, <laughs> If you ever needing help with paying for a room or anything else, I hope that you can trust the people around you to ask for it. Some I trust more than others. That's probably wise. I think I trusted someone who walked out of here and probably shouldn't have, but I put my trust in all of you, and that seems to have been rewarded many times over. So I would rather keep on trusting, even if it's not necessarily deserved in every moment. There's a lot of times I believe innocent blood shouldn't be spilled. I'm undecided on whether or not this is one of them. That's why I'm staring in these flames. Get it out of my system. Eric will put his hand on Ortega's shoulder. You probably can't reach it currently. <laughs> get get the small of the back, man. <laughs> Just give it, give, it, give it a bit of a pat on that. I hope you stick around for the long term, Parrish. I think you're a little more beneficial to this group than probably any of the others, myself included, mainly because you know how to do that funky hoodoo sh- shit, if you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> it's... I'm a, I apologize if funky hoodoo shit is offensive. I don't really know how else to describe it. Hmm. I would describe it as, at least in my experience, imposing my will onto the world with a little Uh, bit of assistance. Leave out the assistance part. The rest of it sounds real good. Such a good line. You don't need assistance. (laughs) Maybe just somebody watching your back every now and then, but you're all right by me, Parrish. And I keep trusting you to watch my back? It's pretty much all I'm good at. As long as you're with this group, I'll be behind everyone's back watching. I was there's a reason one I way or the other. There's a reason I stand at the back. I prefer to watch other people's shoulders than my own. It's a you're a lot smarter than some give you credit for. Sometimes it's better that way. It's at this point, um, for the three of you that haven't done your duties yet, your job, uh, Parrish, Talus, and Ari, what uh, what part of your job, cleaning the gibbering mothers or the skeletons, uh, What uh, whatever you choose to do, we'll find a check for it. I think the Parrish, gibbering come, mothers. Go ahead. Or did the gibbering mothers come from outside, right? There was a hole in the wall, yeah. Yeah. Can I just burn them? Can I just, like, start picking up their gross little bodies and throwing them into pits of fire? (laughs) These aren't needed here. (laughs) They don't really have, like, bodies. They're more like a... Mm. A goop of flesh. Uh, there's no, there's no bone. It's like you're trying to lift it, like you're trying to lift like pudding or jello. <laughs> just, just, like chunks in it. It's like I, you probably like immediately regret trying to pick it up. Is how I feel that would happen. It's like that episode. I, uh, I'm gonna come alongside. Can I come alongside Dallas? Yeah. Um, and just like Talis, hold up, you might hold need a bowl. Yeah. And I'm just gonna use mage hand start like slowly pushing and scooping in the grossest of the stuff uh and so may i will like as daintily as i can clean using mage hand to do the the most disgusting work and uh then i will gather alongside alice to make sure those bodies are cleared out 50 gold pieces is not a small amount of gold pieces it's been a while since ari's had the security that uh I mean, giant friends are, are, are good fun, but gold in your pocket is better sometimes. So I will take some gold in my pocket and clean up. Alice is going to um, Alice Sorry. is going to go, you know, in, in hindsight, that was probably a better idea. And she's also going to cast Mage Hand and help oh. you clean up in the, in the same way. <laughs> uh, Ortega is probably turned around with Parrish at the fire now watching all of what's happened and he's just going to kind of very quietly lean into Parrish and just go I know you haven't been here very long but you're very insightful is there any particular reason you think the other two are letting her lead? To me I, I think it's pretty clear she's the one who offered to lead and with that she's taking responsibilities for leadership whether she understands what that means or not yet it's for her to understand I 
know that you've been in a position of leadership before, and I expect you know that I have as well. It's easy to see a leader when you've been one. Not sure either of us are the right fit to lead this group. Oh, most definitely. I have no desire to be the one in charge of this group, as long as it keeps moving. I I have no desire to stay in one place too long. I just hope that when the time comes, she can prove herself a leader by recognizing other leaders amongst her and asking for any advice if she needs it. She's going to be an excellent captain one day. She'll get there. I think she's well on her way if she's assembled this crew. (laughs) All right. After using Mage Hand and bags and scooping and kind of dumping this <laughs> jello down a drain <laughs> the the chunks kind of like stick to the, the grate a little bit uh as like uh the mouths and, and maws are kind of like stuck and you kind of give them a little hey, get out of here <laughs> Ray, uh, Raynard, Raynard, he, uh, Raynard, he comes over and, uh, uh, <clears throat> well, very well. Uh, everyone seems to have partaken in their share of duties, and I see, I see all of you. Uh, do you have rooms at the at the ready room? I can have the gold sent there, or I can just give it to you now. It's just going to take me a minute. Now we'll wait a minute. That's fine. Very well. And you see, he. Um, oh. Do you have an idea where your little rat friend went? I want that box. He's not our friend. You see, he just came looking for things. He's come every occasionally, but he doesn't Hello, do anything. We've noticed. And if you had to find him outside of here, if you had to give it your best educated opinion, where might someone find him? Uh, where one might find everyone else who comes into this town, the ready room. Well, I don't know why I hoped for more than that. Does make sense when there's one tavern in town again. Mm, you did say oh, that that friend of his exclamation mark or something was coming. The name was Quest. Yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> Whatever. About terrible. Reynard dismisses himself and heads out over to uh, a staircase that seems very shoddily made, seems to lead down into a basement of some sort. Um, About half an hour later, he comes out with 50 gold pieces for every one of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, When he brings it out, I think. takes note of the creepy basement where that gold comes out of. (laughs) Uh, You can definitely take a look. Finally going to break down. It's a locked door uh, as you look down. A, it's a, it's a, I don't know. I just know. I just know it's there. I just know it's there. <laughs> what else is on there? In there? Uh, Probably. <laughs> well, this, this, this is my question. Uh, but again, I will. Uh, I'm getting paid right now, so I'm very present at the moment. Uh, if I feel like robbing the place later, I'll think about it. But I mean, probably gonna, you know, don't bite the hand that feeds you. There might be more gold to get here. Thanks, Lee. And 15 minutes of traps in either direction. Touche. So yeah, yeah, I will, uh, I'll take my gold. Thank you. Parrish hadn't yet done uh, a service, but um, he, I mean, this is kind of his natural element. So he can give last rites over people. He can help chop up bodies. He can, yeah. Mm-hmm. I figured that's kind of what your, your thing was going to be doing. All right. Yep. I think we're tagging. Well, he's probably staying Ari. Right to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ari. No, I, Ari's just, uh, he's hanging in the background and he's playing a dirge, a uh, funeral song. Uh, once Ortega sees Parrish cutting up bodies, he is in. Uh, it's awful. It's so lovely and so awful. So, after your chores at the crematorium are done, it takes you all day. You see Sebastian and Reynard look at you all and thank you for your services and then they head downstairs because that's actually where they live unfortunately <laughs> what do you do i vote it's time to get a drink get behind that healing up isn't a terrible idea somewhere with music if we can find it 
I mean, I, I feel like the ready room is the place to be. Make music if there's not. Besides, everyone we want to run into is going to be at the ready room anyway. Mm. I expect so. And thank you all for staying around to take care of that business. Uh, 50 gold is nothing to sneeze at, but I think it speaks to your character that you do that kind of work. I look at Ortega, and I look at Parrish, and I look at uh, Tatiana. I look at Captain Talis and I say, uh, when you work with friends, it's not as hard as it now. A drink, I believe, is an order. After a long day's work of using magic to avoid the grossest parts of our duties. <laughs> you all head back to the ready room, just a short distance away. You walk in through the familiar doors and you see Prolix Yusuf sitting at a table with another tiefling. You just assume the tiefling question. The tiefling in question is question. As question. I'm going to channel my inner Ari and walk up and place my gun on the table. <laughs> oh, no. Parish, it's too <laughs> early for this. I'm you going to get a drink. quite the hurry. Um, no, I figured we were done. Hmm. I thought we had a contract. I don't recall anything of the sort. Anyways, this is question... Um, they've been helping me look into the research of this box and the treasure eyes. And we've missed quite a lot. It's been quite a day. You know, we've we've done a lot of good work here. Um, over a drink. It's uh, well, we cleaned up your mess. I didn't leave any messes. And uh, are you meaning the? the rock gas that was properly vented by Sebastian? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I really don't understand what you're talking about. But anyway... I just pop up a mage hand doing a middle finger right beside me. Nothing mm. else. Just right there. Ooh, lovely tricks. Anyways, mm. uh, if you'll excuse me, I, uh, I feel like I've had maybe one too many. I'm just going to... Mosey on and find one of the one of the beds for the night. Or at least to keep my quiet company and look into this box further. Pardon a moment. Parrish will be in his way. Oh. Have you met my friend Parrish? <laughs> Gives you a little pat. Yes, lovely. Thank you again for um, helping me not die. Mm-hmm. You're quite welcome. But there was a matter of helping tend to the dead that you did not see to. Oh, and- he doesn't like it when you disrespect the dead. He doesn't yeah, like it at all. It. I didn't really disrespect the dead, did I? I, I feel like no, but you did disrespect yeah. us. I mean, crawling into the belly of a dead animal carcass and pulling out things that it swallowed, and then just leaving it on the table and not properly disposing. Yes, I think that's disrespect to the dead, don't you, Parish? Did the rock uh, have anything to quite like? Was the rock upset at all, or should I have apologized? I, 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 I honestly, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, are you? Because there's still uh, bodies sorry. to burn. I, I, I apologize. I was, I, I couldn't get my, my mic to work for a second there. As he says, uh, was the rock angry? <laughs> Uh, Ari says, I was, and thaumaturgies all of the windows slamming shut at the same time. Uh, you might be unaware of who you're talking to and what you've done. You have a cavalier attitude, and generally speaking, I don't care for it. I don't care for it. Thaumaturgies loudly. Uh, oh, uh. It's probably at this time that Ortega will be like, oh, shit, and turn around from heading up to the bar to get a drink, and he's going to come back and just kind of gently put both his hands on the back of this guy's shoulders and lean over and just say, remember me? Looks at you. Oh, yes. I... <laughs> and he's just going to pinch his trap muscles a little bit. Art- Artanian. But, but, Artanian, right? Ar- 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 Artagon? Ar- <laughs> My name's not important. What's important is when people keep their word. And you, sir, are not worth your word because you didn't keep it. Uh, uh, I mean, I feel like I kind of kept it. Uh, you know, I, I, I did say that you could have the, the, the box when I was done with it. Um, I did say that I would pull the box out of it. Uh, I did say I was going to do the procedure. Um, uh, yeah, I, I feel like uh, 
I feel like I did everything. Uh, Except what? pretend the dead. What's that? Uh, what's what's that over there? Uh, he's gonna try to make a deception check on you guys. Uh, I need everyone. What's that over there? <laughs> wow. Uh, I need everyone to uh, make a perception check, please. Perception. What's the eighteen? This is awful. I look because I got an eight. Uh, <laughs> no. Ortega got a 13 and he's still squeezing the gentleman's shoulders. Uh, I'll be right back. I got to go get caramel corn for my wife. Okay. Yeah. It's in the basement, so it won't be hard to get. I'll be back in two. Parrish got a 25. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you. I can't hear you. can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. The reason. Yeah. Yeah. There's this little button on my microphone that loves to turn off by itself. Oh, okay. okay. While this altercation is happening and everybody is really mad at this guy, this seems like a pretty good opportunity to just try to maybe pick his pocket. Don't love, don't take that. Okay. I love it. I'm so go glad. Captain, go, Captain. Go, go. Uh, make a slide of hand check. I'm going to do the blue one. The blue. Can I be doing the help action at all with this or? Oh. No. You I feel like we're all teaming up on them. But Yeah, I would say advantage because we're all distracting him. Yeah, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Nice. Okay. That is a thirteen plus eight is my oh. sorry, six is my side of hand. So that's nineteen six. You are able to pull out um, like you're not looking for like you're obviously like not looking for anything in specific, right? Or you look you trying to go for the box? I'll take whatever's there. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> you do find a folded up spell scroll. Love it. Of bestow curse. Oh, I love it even more. Um, it's at that point as he goes, oh, what's what's that over there? You you grab the folded spell scroll, and for a few of you, you go, what? <laughs> and just in the nick of time, with his other hand, he snaps his fingers and poof, disappears. No. Ah, well, that's annoying. Now, I had my 18. Do I have any idea of where he went or where he would have gone or some directionality to his spell? Yeah, I did so have a- for the people who did get higher than 15, uh, okay. you do see that he just missy stepped towards the front door as he ran <laughs> the front door. <laughs> Love this guy. Uh, yeah, I'll, I would uh, like to... Go, oh, first, go ahead, Barry, I had please. a higher perception. I'll um, use Blessing of the Raven Queen, and with a just kind of explosion of black feathers, be at the door, <laughs> and I'll lock it. I got the key. Well, he would like he would have made it. Okay, so I'll still I'll I'll still be there, or <laughs> if he's opened it in front of the door. Yeah, he 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 basically waited for his opportune moment to misty step outside of the door. It's just you see him hit the door as someone is walking through. So he was able mm-hmm. to pass through the front. Uh, but it, as soon as you do that, you get up to him and you're like, as he's just like, ah, and you... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not being threatening. Um, I'll just tell him that I understand if you think you are above the work that was asked of you, the work that you bargained for. I just hope that at some point you come into the wisdom and self-awareness to know that you're not. You're a small man and you shouldn't hold that against yourself. I saved your life in there and I would gladly do it again. If you are looking to break the bargain you made regarding the puzzle box and my friends in there, I cannot guarantee your safety. The puzzle box and the Patricia eyes and Alicia, I, I intend to uh, mishold my end of the bargain on that one. I promise you that. Uh, You've promised me things before. Well, uh, uh, look, I didn't sign up to do, you know, the the nitties and the gritties, and that's just, I mean, it's it's below me. 
And, and I, I came here on other reasons. And I just, I, I can't waste my time doing things. I have a purpose. You have a purpose. Just unfortunately, it seems like your purpose was to clean up. Uh, I only said that I agreed to do the things that I felt that I had to agree to in order to get the box. Anyways, um, and he kind of pats your chest. He goes, very, very firm. Um, Not particularly, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Made a paper. <laughs> he kind of does it like because you're wearing your your um, your, your armor. Right. Oh, I understand hey. you are cursed with glorious purpose. I won't impede you any further. Frankly, I don't think there are many people that you could help, even the dead. Oh, um, well, that's kind of why I dig them up. Anyways, toodaloos. And he turns on his heel and his, his tail kind of flickers in the, in the, as, as he walks away. He seems to be, his head is now in a book that he seems to be holding as he's holding the box and kind of wandering around holding the book up and the box <laughs> up and trying to figure out where he's going. And uh, eventually he turns towards the betrayer's wise uh, and he heads off in that direction. All right, I'll come back in. I don't think he means to betray us. He is just blessed and cursed with glorious purpose. <laughs> well, purpose to piss me off. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, if you want to return the curse, there's this, and I throw the spell scroll on the table. Oh, Talis, darling, you are wonderful. Just so I wonderful. I didn't get what I was looking for, but something's better than nothing. Honestly, I wanted to ask him for the 50 gold worth of work that he should have been doing, but that more than covers it. So it warms the cockles of my heart at the very least. That's why I do what I do. I'm going to get a drink now. You see um, now with the empty seats um, across from the Stephen question. Excuse me. Um, I, I understand that he was to pay for my beverages of the evening. Um, is that going to be covered by you all now? <laughs> Gladly. No, no, perish. Perish. Bite your own tongue. No, no, perish is right. <sighs> I know he's more than a few like him. I tell you to go bite your tongue, but maybe I will. Buy me a drink first. I'm, I need a drink. You are so first rounds off me. Such and so Ari's going to go and get a round for everybody, including this uh, this inexplicably connery gentleman who has joined us at the table. <laughs> oh, I love Sean Connor. I love it so much. Well, as I'm sure you've heard, my name is Question. And it looks to me as though there are a number of you who are emanating some very interesting magic. If you're casting a spell right now, I'm going to need you to stop that right now. He doesn't like magic. Of the tieflings I've met today, I just, I I hope it's not too forward. You make a much better first impression. How can smelling like cupcakes not make a good impression? I guess technically that was yesterday. Uh, Never mind. I have no idea what you're talking about. Your friend across the table. Bit of an ass. Curse with glorious purpose. Oh. (laughs) Oh, he did not smell like cupcakes. Yes. No, we're talking about different people. Well, I was told by Yusuf that there would be some answers and some questions by a group of people. So, I'm all ears. Ask away. And I do say that is a very magnificent hat you got there, my horned friend. Mm-hmm. Sorry, a magnificent what I have there? Uh, your hat. I don't <laughs> think he's talking about your hat. The hat's magnificent. The At least I hope he's talking about your hat. Goodness, yes. No, I had, I had partial concerns, but I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I get it. Um, well, question. We might have a few things that need answers, but I get a bit concerned about trust sometimes. Of what makes sense to ask you versus what offers a lot of extra exposure for myself and my friends here. Anybody in particular got a question? What's with the box? Yeah, I have a question. question. You can answer hers first. This here is Captain Talis. You will answer truthfully. You will answer honestly. You will not like how your evening ends. My horned friend. 
I guess it depends on the questions, I suppose. So, who exactly do you work for, or represent, or come in the name of, whatever you want to call it? Oh, well, I come from the Cobalt Soul. I'm Cobalt Soul. Typically based in Uncoral, but I travel a lot, and I meet many fascinating characters like yourselves. It's not often that you come across parties of such fascinating and impressionable characters like yourselves, but I'm fond of you. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. I mean a little bit. So, what is in it for you? Well, I... I'm interested in a phenomenon. Let's see. The rotation of the nature of history, I suppose. The mythic resonance. Um, I like to see history when it's repeated itself. And I have a theory that specifically here in Bazozan, there are multiple forms of that looped time in history that has been happening as of late. And he looks at Ari again. Tell me, my horned friend, have you been seeing anything odd recently? Well, you're funny looking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ortega would like but to I... insight check Ari. Okay, go I'll ahead. let you finish, but like, he's definitely oh, yeah. no, I would, I would to this say that, uh, I may have, I may have seen some things, I may have heard more, feel like you're fishing for deep secrets without offering much information. It's a tactic I love. Huge fan. Used it a lot myself. But you better start giving answers. Question. Well, if I'm going to start giving answers, how about a bit of honesty? Since you've walked in, I've been reading your thoughts. And as soon as I mentioned something about repeated, repeated history, your mind was racing. Your friend, has he mentioned anything? Or it seems like all of everyone else's thoughts are empty when it comes to what I'm talking about. And it seems like you're trying to fight a or cause a fight between between all of us. No, no, not at all. It's the very opposite, you see. Again, my name is Question. It's what I do. Well, in everything. Question? We don't question everything. If my friend here has thought he's allowed to have them, and he does not need to share them with us if he does not feel comfortable doing so. Very well. we, tr- we trust him and everyone else here that there's th- if there's something that needs to be said to the rest of us, they will do so. And we would ask you kindly to no longer peer into our thoughts. We did not ask you to. We seek clarification from your answers, not from each other's heads. <sighs> Well, I apologize. You see, unfortunately, there are some things about me, and me specifically, that I don't have a whole lot of control over the thought reading. But the detect magic, that is just simply an item that I possess, and I apologize. And he... Oh, I hope this isn't another one of your relatives. He wiggles his eye a little bit, and you see that it kind of looks a little off. You could say I have an eye for things. That's um, disturbing. I want to make an insight check, or at least a, like a perception investigation check. See if I know that kind of eye. I know people have used stuff like this before. Do I know what that is? I mean, make your... Um, I would say it's more... 14? Fun. Yeah, Arcana check, maybe? If it's, it's a magic item. Uh, Arcana... 14, yeah. Zero on Arcana. You you know that there are definitely magic items in the world um, where people can replace body parts with with these items to grant them kind of like passive abilities 
uh, for more secure, you know, the items that wouldn't typically get stolen that are more important to have on hand. Um, basically, just being able to keep themselves safer. It's it's very common, uh, but to see them being used in uh, this way, um, you haven't seen, you haven't really seen anything like it before. Here's what I'm tempted to do, friend. Your peeping Tom eye is making me feel uncomfortable, and I'm unsure whether or not to put the barrel of a pistol into your other one or the one that I like less. Alternatively, I could keep my pistol in my holster. You could quit double speaking and provide the answers that we seek plainly. Think about your options. Think about which eye you like the best. I'm rather fond of both. But if it'll please you, I can temporarily turn it off for the time being, as it is only just picking up the magical items that are in your possession, like those sword and the mask and those... Ooh, what is that? You're very quickly becoming my least favorite tiefling I've met today. Apologies. My gun is already cocked. So wait, one of the magic items, he just listed some magic items. The mask, the sword. What else did he list? I believe I cut him off. I feel like I miss her. <laughs> he, he, was a, he, he said, ooh, what is that? And then Parrish cut him off. <laughs> <sighs> Ari, that's your name, right? Ari. For you, sure. Tell me you feel it too. My comrades. Do I? But I do. The history surrounding this place. The romance of heroes fighting against impossible odds. Sacrificing everything for the sake of defending that world. All done for the people who would never really know them. Never think of them. Never be able to thank them. Simply because it was the right thing to do. And ages later, now we see the Aurora Watch somehow doing the shame. I don't even think they know it. You've seen the history here. Do you feel it the way I feel it? Okay, so A, do I feel it the way he feels it? Uh, I'm not sure if that's an opinion question or if that's like a magical inclination question. Also, could you clarify, is this history something that's really unique to my backstory that is not for the table? Something that is worth sharing with the table? Uh, Well, I mean... (laughs) I'm putting you on the spot, unfairly. No, no, you can you can definitely divulge like what you've seen in your visions. This is what he's hinting at. Sorry for cross table talk. Ari, is this something that you'd already shared with Parrish? Yeah. Okay. And Ari looks over to Parrish and he's just looking for a word, like not even a word, just like a look of like advice, like thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't. I pity those blessed with glorious purpose like the heroes he's talking about. Those who serve in great, grand stages that no one knows about. I would much prefer the smaller stage in a cozy pub. I don't know if that's any guidance to you. Why is everybody talking in riddles? <laughs> and I'm just going to go and grab a bottle good. of whiskey. <laughs> because riddles no, I, 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 need answers, dear. No offense, Christian. Uh, I don't like you. And Ortega's going to get up and head to the bar. I could have told you that. Anyways, enough about this. We're getting nowhere. You have questions. You have not yet provided them other than who am I? Did Ari want to continue at all? Um, yeah. Oh my god, Josh. What? Sorry. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I have frozen as a person, not technologically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not an Ashley phrase. <laughs> um, Kyle, could you please remind me, do I know who's talking to me in these visions, in these things? Do I know yet who exactly who it is? You have been able to put two and two together. Uh, you, you can, you've okay. seen, you've seen the, the statue and you've seen the visions and he's kind of helped you out, yeah. I don't want to go first. Never do. But if you have answers to all these questions, then what does Udvara Pak want with me? Interesting. It's not a not a question that I feel I can actually answer. You see, personal questions like that, who knows? Um, 
but if this is a man of history, like I assume he is, and you are in the present, any typical beings from history that have connections to the present oftentimes want to repeat it. I don't know who this Uduvara Park is, but by reading your mind, he seems like he's somebody closer to you than maybe you expected him to be. That's one way to put it. I wish that is an answer I could uh, give you, but unfortunately I can't. Do you know where I can find out more as to this cycle? It's happening to me. Well... I'm just gonna yell from across the room, I'm just gonna put the box! <sighs> What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> to answer both of those questions. Two weeks I've been thinking like, What's in the box? <laughs> both of those questions is very easy to answer. The betrayer's rise. That's where you're going to find all of the answers that you seek. Or at least, that's where I would look. You've already been to the other place, it seems, and that seems to have been a a good starting point. But it seems your destination lies, and he points towards the mountain, up there. How much does Ari know about the temple? I'm not going to make you make a check for this. Not a lot. (laughs) You have no, okay. you've heard of the name and that's it. You just know it's in Bazalzan and that's it. Well, I mean, I've got questions around what exactly the betrayer's rise is. And it feels like question has not been able to particularly live up to his namesake for my personal inclinations. Outside of the betrayer's rise, I find myself tapped on appropriate questions for this tiefling. Parish, <laughs> what do you have for this horned feller? Uh, Parrish will look to the rest of the party, two of them at the bar. Does Talus have any questions for him? I mean, Tatiana wants to know about this box. Know about this box? Well, uh, I answered that question the previous. Oh, that's right. You said it was a true one. I have a question for you, dear Captain Talus. Mm-hmm. And allow me to show you something. And he pulls out a sketchbook. And as he filters through a sketchbook, you see the sketch of an island bathed in the moonlight of Katha and Lourdes, both full. The island's covered with trees, marble pillars, crystal shards. And something actually resembles that final chamber of the Emerald Grotto. As he flips through a couple more pages, you see that there seems to be a rough drawing of what appears to be a more elaborate version of the island item that's in your pocket. It's larger, and it has three delicate spires inlaid with stones. As he flips to that paper, he puts it in front of you and he says, do you recognize these jewels? I think you probably already know the answer to your question. Oh, yes, I know that I do. (laughs) Do you have questions about it? You know where there are more? More vestiges? Sure. Not particularly, except for the ones that have been mm. quite mainstream in the world, have been used often. I don't, I don't know, but I know where I can find one of them. Any points to your pay? I did have a final question for you. Of course. If everyone else has their curiosity satisfied. As much as can be. <laughs> Tell me, question. What is my opinion of you? Interesting. Well, at first glance, you found me intriguing. But over the course of this conversation, your interest has waned, but not in the way that you expected it to. You do still have a general distaste, but the answers that I've given you haven't given you a reason of any ill intent. So, do you want the answer that you're looking for, or do you want me to lie? I want you to get the fuck out of my bar. (laughs) Ah, yes. I will, but on one condition. Let me see the jewel of three pairs. I promise my hands will stay right here. I just want to see it. I look to Parrish and I look to Talus. I will make you potentially a deal, assuming that their friends are comfortable with this arrangement. Potentially, you may look at what you seek. If I can put a gun back into your neck while you do. You can do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I am not threatened by you. I 
Yeah, and that actually is maybe what makes me concerned. And you have no reason to feel threatened by me, I promise you that. We're not. Captain can do whatever she'd like with whatever's in her possession. I'll take a seat at his table, and since you can't control what minds you read, I can make this an incredibly unpleasant stay. And I'm just going to try and think of everything. <laughs> That would be very unpleasant that I've lived through. Okay. Make uh like make a history check. It's awesome, but that's like are you got any bardic inspiration? <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll bardically inspire. If I can if, if if my eyes are able to demonstrate how awesome that line was. Because I really want to work on <laughs> eyebrow <laughs> great history. <laughs> cool. Remember I, I, if, if I may bardically inspire by virtue of like pure impressive, like yeah, uh, then yes. But I'll leave that up to the DM. Oh, I'll allow it. It's fine. D six or eight. Uh, oh gosh, sorry. It's been it's been a it's been a bit. Um, less features. Bardic inspiration. D six for right now. Sorry. That's okay. Sixteen. So you definitely think of some pretty crazy things. Um, and you can see question. He's wincing and it's terrible. But it seems as though you can feel him in your thoughts. And after some point in time in your mind, you hear, you realize I'm just letting you do this. While I can't control the mind reading, I can still control who I read. Anyways, I'll take care. Uh, if he's in my mind and I know it, I'll think, why do you want to see them? I... And he says it out loud. I'll be honest, I've only drawn and read about these, and well, let's just say it's it's come to me more as of recent. It seems as though um, potential memories are shared. Visions. Can I inside check that? Yeah. That'll be a nine. Welcome to the two crew. <laughs> you have every right to believe him. He seems like he's talking straight. I think Talis is going to put her hand on the little pouch where the jewels are. And her instinct is that she wants to show him. But just before she takes them out, she hesitates and waits to see if she gets any instructions. Parish looks to Ari. Like, what's it want to have? Pardon? Hmm. Parish looks to Ari. It's a rare thing. Generally, there's a fee to even gaze upon it. So you'll either tell us exactly why you want to see it and exactly why having it out is so important to you. And then you will pay us for the privilege. <laughs> now, Meta, like, and I think Parrish knows this from like, and, and Talos would know this, know this gimmick as well. Is we're finding out how much money this guy has, and we're fine. We're try, I'm trying to find out how like how important is it for him to see this? Like, what's he willing to put in the table to see these things? Because I don't trust him at all. I'm trying to figure out like what's his game here. He's willing to throw a lot of money at this. Then I trust him somehow even less. I don't know. This seems like such a bad situation. I can tell you right now that while my pockets are empty, they are very much full and full with knowledge. I come from the Cobalt Soul, and I have no reason to cause you and your friends to think less. Cobalt Soul is a pretty stand-up organization at this time, right? Like, that's that's my read of it, is like, yeah. stand, like Cobalt Soul is not, like, shitty. No, it's, it's a fantastic place. And that insight checks yeah. 21. Yeah, he's... Part of the Cobalt School? Uh, for if he's telling the truth. <laughs> he, he is, you know, he's telling the truth. He has... Okay. Yeah, he's telling the truth. Okay. You can, you from can the Cobalt see, Soul. Like, in his whole his whole demeanor, he hasn't lied once. Elsa's is going to take it out, and she's going to put the jewels on around her neck. <gasps> Ari's guns are cocked at his side. There. Still waiting to draw. You see, question... Their demeanor changes to reflect a reverent awe. Ah, yes. It's 
glorious, magnificent. You see, this jewel, I believe, was actually just an ordinary necklace. Suit you, by the way. But this necklace was filled with divine power during the calamity. Ah, let's see. This, this object, this necklace, is a key to a mythic cycle that happens to resonate with Basilzen. If you learn more about it, I'll stay in Basilzen. I will love, love to learn more. And I feel like just there, he points to something and he flips through uh, his notebook, his sketchbook once more and shows a, a third picture as he starts rubbing it and you see that it's a picture that depicts a, a long haired woman peering into the distance and you all see this as the holy symbol of Evandra the Changebringer. This etching was taken from a wall carving in the betrayer's eyes. Someone had brought it to me and I had to write it down. There is definitely a big connection between the Jewel of Three Prayers and the Betrayer's Rise, but with what it may be, I don't know. But I do know that Avandra and Loth, the champions, were here at one point, and they must have fought in. History is to repeat itself, or has repeated itself, but just to what caliber, I do not know. But I think the next part of your journey lies in the Betrayer's Rise. And that's where we're going to end it tonight. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to a mountaintop temple? Pretty much a, a, a thing that has been built before and during the Calamity. Yeah. A thing that has existed ever since. Oh, the man. that <laughs> We are messing with deeply ancient powers here. As the curtain falls on this chapter of our epic saga, our party stands at the precipice of a new journey. The Betrayer's Rise awaits. The echoes of battles won and curses faced linger, but the path forward is clear. Lady Tatiana, Ari, Parrish, Ortega, and Captain Talos, fortified by the trials endured, now set their sights on the challenges that await. Before we conclude, a heartfelt thank you to MAB Music, whose enchanting melodies have accompanied us on this adventure, enhancing the magic of our storytelling. And to you, our steadfast listeners, thank you for your unwavering support. As we step into the holiday season and approach a new year, we extend our warmest wishes. May your days be filled with joy and your nights with dreams of grand tales. And speaking of the new year, exciting changes await the podcast. More content, new adventures, and a special treat. A one-shot featuring Ragbeer during his time before Jigao. So, dear friends, until we reconvene for the next chapter in 2024, I have been your host and Dungeon Master Kyle. Happy holidays, a joyous new year, and may the magic of storytelling continue to weave its spell.